Hi guys. Today I'm going to read the you know what book, the book I'm reading. Let's start off quick. I need to get this done quick. I guess they figured they take every bit of fuel they could get. Coach kept Yusuf in for the whole first half, and he was so sweaty that he had to wring out his jersey. But I wish he hadn't wring wrung it out to the cooler, into the cooler, because there were some bottles of water there. Like I said, everyone was fired up after that speech by Coach Paddle. But I guess those guys in Scotland had something we didn't. Because the second half of the game started a lot like the first. Eh. Swipe. Things got so out of, out of control in the fourth quarter that Coach Paddle put me and the rest of the bench in. But if, but if he was hoping we'd give our team a spark and turn, thing, turn things around, he must have been pretty disappointed. Oof! To be honest, I can't even remember what the final score was. All, around, all I remember is that on the right hole, Mom said our coach should have run diff different plays and that I should... Should have got more playing time. Um, the only thing that said was that if this was golf, we would have won. Because we had the lowest score. I guess they were both trying to make me feel better, but it did, didn't really work. Sunday. Mom's always saying how sports brings people together, but I think she might actually be wrong about that. Because in my experience, sport ju sports just tear us apart. The people in my town don't like the surroundings, surrounding towns because they always beat us at sports. But the town we hate the most is it's Laxville. Because those guys always destroy us. It's been going on like this since, since before I was born. And whenever an old timer in my town mentions Slacksville, they always spit. I can I gotta go into Slacksville to get my vacuum fixed. But two. Yep. But two. My town's issues about Slacksville go a lot deeper than sports, though. About a hundred years ago, we were supposed to get a jewel jewelry factory in our town, which would have bought in a lot of jobs and money. But some big wigs from Slacksville swooped in the last minute and stole the factory from from us. Town clerk. These days, Slacksville's got a lot, all the good stuff, like a mall and, and two golf courses, and we've got to show for ourselves, is, and, and all we've got to show ourselves is an abandoned drive-in movie theater and macaroni sub shop. So, we're always looking for ways to get back to get back at those guys. And since we can't beat them at sports, we have to be creative. Last year, the state was planning on putting a big garbage garbage dump in our in our town. But we made some changes to to our zoning laws. So the state had to put the dumps in Slacksville instead. And I and I've heard that that they're not too happy about it either. State dump. 
It seems like things were gonna change a few months back when the mayor of Slacksville said our mayor was saying he wanted to make a peace offering. Every year, our town has a giant bonfire in the park on on the fourth of July. And this year, the people of Slacksville wanted to donate the wood. The time was great because our town wasn't out of money for. Our town was out of money for recreational stuff, and couldn't afford to do the bonfire this year anyway. So our mayor gave the plant the green light, and a few days. Days later, the trucks started showing up from Slacksville with piles of lumber, and they even set it up for free. Wow! But right before we lit the fire on the fourth of July, our health inspector came by the town town park and said the wood from Slacksville was chemically treated. So we couldn't burn it because it will release dangerous fumes into the air. The next day, our mayor called the mayor of Slacksville and told him he'd have to send someone to haul the wood away. But I guess the their mayor already knew the wood was full of chemicals and thought the whole thing was pretty hilarious. So we've got a giant pile of rotting lumber in the middle of the our town park, and this fall the preschoolers had to play their soccer games around it. But their soccer season got cut short when a bunch of animals m- moved into the wood pile, and everyone agreed it was too dangerous for kids to keep playing near it. So I guess Slacksville has the last laugh, last laugh at least for now. The reason I'm bringing this stuff up because today was our first away away game, and of course it was in Slacksville. I got a queasy feeling when we drove past the sign because I hadn't been there in years. Welcome to Slacksville, Jewelry Town. Our game was at Slacksville High, and their gym was way better than ours. The court looked brand new, and I didn't see a single piece of gum on the floor. The gym was packed before we got there, and people started booing during warm-ups. Only a few of our parents showed up to cheer us on. I had to carpool the game with Edward Mealy because Mom said she needed she needed to go with Dad to Manny's preschool play. But I kind of wonder if Mom bailed on me because she knew that was on what was on store for our team in Slacksville. I was pretty anxious for the game to be to get started, so I could take my spot at the end of the bench. But there weren't. There, but there were already people sitting in that spot, and there wasn't any room for me. There was an empty space, a few rows in the stand, few few rows up in the stands. So when the game started, that's where I went. But I, I was afraid people were gonna notice that I wasn't from Slacksville. And give me a hard time. So whenever the crowd booed my team, I did too. Boo! Which was actually pretty easy to do because we got off to another terrible start. Slacksville started the game by hitting the deep three pointer, and then they stole the ball and hit another one. And before long, they were ahead by twenty points. I thought that once they they built up a lead, they 
start to take it easy on us. But I guess everyone in Saxville is still store about the garbage dump because they never let up. They started running a full court play, full court court press, which meant we couldn't even get the ball past half court. In fact, we couldn't get the ball in in play because those Slacksville kids were all over us. Coach Paddle was yelling at our team from the sidelines, but his voice was drowned by the Slacksville crowd. Honk. Every once in a while, my team, while my team would get the ball, and every once in a while, my team would get the ball inbounds. But then three or four Saxville players would swarm up the kid who got the pass, and we couldn't even get the. Any rebounds because their center was so big that big he actually made Ufus look small. Snag. By halftime, the score was score was fifty two to zero, and I was hoping the refs would use mercy the mercy rule and end the game. But I guess they they don't do that kind of thing in basketball. Trudge, trudge. I'm pretty sure the people who run the Slacksville gym turned the heat, dropped the heat into the visitors' locker room, just to make us uncomfortable because it was like a sauna in there, and especially for sweaty kids. Coach Paddle gave another speech, but this one about wasn't about Scottish armies or anything like that. It was a pride. He said that when we stepped onto the floor, we were representing our town. Then he said we shouldn't even look at the score because the only thing ma- that mattered was how hard we fought. And that got everyone just as fired up as the speech in our first game. Roar! But some, by, by a few kids on my team took Coach Paddle too literally. Because when the second half started, our team was ready to fight for real. Yusef got things started by throwing an elbow. Then Ruby Bird took down Slacksville Center. Oof! Ah! Then the Woodley brothers started going at each other. At it which, with each other for some reason. Biff! Punch. I guess too fair up makes makes a little too mess. But the refs had bigger problems to deal with. Kevin Palm, Doro's mother, and one of the Slacksville moms started arg- arguing with their stands. And the next thing you knew that they were throwing haymarkets. Punch. Oh my god. The refs went into the bleachers to break it up. So I decided to make myself some room over the bench on the bench because it was a lot safer there. But I wish I had stayed there where I was because when Ruby and Yusef got ejected from fighting, the coach put me in the game along with Tommy Chu. The Splack Sparrow coach po- pulled his stars to give them a rest and, then, and he put his bench players too. The coach, coach Paddle, told our team to run for the place. He he taught us at practice, and believe it or not, the play actually worked. Zip, boop, boink. Wow. Now the score was fifty-two to two, and the Saxville crowd was really annoyed because they thought they were gonna sunk skunk us. On well, now you're wrong. So Slacksville coach, the Slacksville coach, put all his stars back in the game. They reeled off twenty three straight points, and it seemed like there was nothing we could do to stop them. I didn't understand 
any of Coach Pedal plays, so I just ran up up and I I just ran up up I just ran up and down the court and tried to look like I knew that I knew what was happening. Uh, oh wait, doing. But then Kevin got double teamed, and he threw the ball to me. I didn't know what I su I was supposed to do, so I just tried to s throw the ball and get rid of it. But a Slacksville player hacked me on the arm, and the ref called ref called it a foul. Ow! Whack! Tweet! The ref put me at a free throw line and gave me the ball. And I really wish I remembered the stuff coach Paddle taught us about shooting the shooting technique because everyone's eyes were on me. The slack spill crowd wasn't exactly making it easy to concentrate. I think the fans have to be quiet when a player is trying to throw, shoot a free throw. But when I tried to make them to be try to get them be be more respectful, it didn't work. Shh. I totally whiffed my shot and the crowd let me hear about it. But at least it was over. Airball Then the ref gave me the ball and told me to shoot again. I thought he was just being nice by giving me a try, but it turns out when there's a shooting foul, you get two shots. I didn't want to miss again, so I thought about shooting it backward to at least have a chance. Chance of making it. But I didn't want to make Coach Pedal match, and I decided to try the granny shot, where you throw the ball from between your legs. But when I airballed that one, even the grannies laughed at me. <laughs> After that, I was ready to go back to my spot on the bench. So I subbed myself up out of the game, which I found out later it's, it's not actually a thing. A player is supposed to do. Melee, you're up. The Slacks, Slacks, Slacksville kept running up the score, and before it long, and, and before long, it was ninety-eight to two. Then one of their players hit a three-pointer, pointer. So now they had one hundred one points. But the scoreboard board could only display two digits for each team. So all of a sudden, it looked like we were ahead. So I started going crazy on the bench. And that really ticked off the Saxville crowd. The clock was winding down. And, the Slack and Slacksville tried to move the ball up the court. But now our team was playing with pride. And we locked it down on the defensive end. Zaxville managed to get a, get past us, and and they hit a layup. So in the final buzzer went down, they had left us. Better home time, time zero, fourth quarter. The only thing that made me feel better was when the Mister Mealy stopped that Zaxville dump to get rid of an old. Mattress. We might not ever beat those guys in sports, but at least our town doesn't smell. Stay dump. November. Tuesday. I wish I could say that after Slacksville. Slacksville. After Slacksville, our team got better. And we won a few games during the season, but that's not what happened. In fact, things got just things just got worse and worse as the season went on. After the Saxville game, Mister Macaroni from Macaroni's sub shop called the co 
call Coach Paddle and told him he didn't want to sponsor our team anymore. But by then, it was too late to change our uniforms, so we just used electrical tape to, to black out the logos. And that turned into a problem because in our next game, one of... One of the kids on the other team got electrical tape from Yusuf's, Yusuf's jerseys. Electrical tape from Yusuf's jersey stuck into his face. And when the kid's mom rolled the tape, he pulled his uh, eyebrows clean off. Rip. Whenever we start to fall behind the in a game, Mom will let Coach Paddle what he should be doing differently, and I'm not sure he really appreciated her advice. Have you ever tried playing zone defense? Because maybe that will help. Somewhere along the line, the other team's coaches started feeling sorry for us. So they'd play bench warmers instead of their starters. But that didn't change the results. The parents on our team started complaining to Rec League that we were losing by too many points and it wasn't good for our self-esteem. So the league made some rule changes to keep things under control. The new rule said if your team was ahead by 20 or more, more points, you had to pass 5 minutes before you took a shot. And that actually kept the score down, but it was actually pretty humiliating when, when the other kids on the other team counted their passes out loud. 2 3 Then team then the then teams started trying to keep their scores down on their own. And they tried all sorts of things like only dribbling with their left hand and even closing their eyes when they shot. But the scores were still lopsided. what? Lopsided, I think. So halfway through the season, the Rec League did something a little more drastic to help us win. One weekend, they dropped that's a whole age group. And the other week after that, they dropped us down another level. And there's nothing like having your butt handed to you by having a bunch of elementary kids to make you feel Good about yourself. One, two. I only made one basket the entire season, but it was on the uh, but it was on the wrong hoop. And I guess Coach Paddle wanted me to, wanted me to have my moment, so he didn't even say anything up when it happened. Slide. By the end of the season, only mom and a few other parents came to the games. And by then, the ref, even the refs weren't play, paying attention. Choo choo. We were so happy when the season finally ended that we gave Coach Paddle one of the big, like they do when a, cha when a team wins a championship. But I hope he took a real shower when he got home, because that thing was full of sweat. Sploosh. After our last last game, we had an end of a season end of season banquet at Macaroni Sub Shop, and the only reason Mr. Macaroni agreed to host it was because his restaurant still wasn't officially open, and he needed. He needed the business, but I avoided any food with mayonnaise in it, just in case. Munch, chew, chomp, sniff. 
Coach Paddle handed out awards, and every player got one. But since no one was any good this season, he had to get creative. This certificate is presented to Greg Hefley for try for trying to learn a new sport. And I can't read the name before paddle because I don't know the squirrely lines mean. Anyways. Oh. After he had cake, Coach Paddle gave a speech. He said that we might not have won any games, but he was proud of us trying our hardest and never giving up. Then he said that even though there probably weren't any future professional athletes on our team, there were a lot of other exciting careers out there like accounting, web design, and web design, and puppetry. It wasn't inspiring as some of the other speeches he gave during the season, but I guess they all can't be, they can't all be winners. I was just glad the season was finally over, because it meant I could go back to my regular life. And I'm pretty sure my teammates felt the, felt the same way. But the one, per one person who couldn't let it go was Mom. Before Mr. Paddle got in his car to leave, Mom told him about the state tournament for teams that hadn't won any games during the season. Then he showed him a flyer he'd, she'd print out. Tough season? Turn this frown upside down to the, in the second chance tournament. Girls are the winner to everyone. I really wished Mom had asked me about this first because the last thing, last thing I wanted to do Wanted was to play more basketball, but luckily Mr. Paddle felt the, same, felt the same way. Mr. Paddle told Mom that our team was hopeless at basketball and he wasn't willing to put us through any more misery. And even and even though it sounded a little harsh, Mom did not argue with him because it was true. A week later, Mom invited the whole team to our house. I thought this was one of those end of the season parties where you where you have pizza and maybe watch a movie or something, but it was a it was a whole other thing. Once everyone got to our house, Mom said she had an an out an, an, an announcement to make, and that's really hard to say. Hard to say. She said she was going to enter us in the second chance tournament and that she was going to be our coach. Then she said we were going to enter the tournament as a whole new team for a fresh start. Then, and she started handing out uniforms. Everyone got kind of excited because these, are, these uniforms looks, looked expensive. The jersey, jersey had blue and blue and gold stitching, and each kid's last name was written on the back. There was no sponsor this time, so I'm guessing Mom paid for these out of her own pocket. One the on the front of each jersey was a picture of one of those sled dogs you see in Alka Al Alaska. Okay. And mom explained that our team was going to be the Huskies, just like her middle school basketball team. It was pretty obvious mom was trying to really, really leave her glory days through U.S., but I didn't really care. Because like I said, those uniforms were nice. Mom said this time we were going to be winners, and that and that sounded a whole lot better than being account accountants and puppeters. Thursday. The big day is big. The big tournament is less than a week away, so our team doesn't have a ton of time to prepare. But after our first pra first practice, 
I'm kind of glad we don't. Mom's coaching style is completely different from Mr. Paddle's. Instead of working on our basketball skills, we did a bunch of touchy-feeling team-building exercises. Exercises. I just hope Mom knows what he's do, what she's doing, because I don't see how that stuff is gonna help us win any games. Okay, all together now. I've got your back. One of the, one of the exercises was supposed was supposed to help us get to know each other better. We stood in a circle, and when you threw the ball to another player, you had to tell everyone something about yourself. So when it was my turn to throw the ball, I said that I, that I like mint chocolate chip ice cream. Well, that was really detailed, because I like mint chocolate chip too. It's a war of mint chocolate chip flakes and don'ts out there. But when Edward Mealy got the ball, he finally started talking. He told her how his stepmom is really strict and how she doesn't like his pet turtle that he got for for his birthday. In fact, he went on so on for so long that Mom had to take the ball from him and hand it to someone else. Whew. After that, we played some actual basketball. Mom tried teaching us a few, few plays that our team used the year they reached the state finals, but we were having trouble getting the hang of things. Zip. Zip. Oof. I didn't think the fact that we were, uh, we were terrible was a, such a bad thing. I've seen a, a bunch of those movies about teams who are underdogs, but then they pull together and win at the end. And I've been wondering if we could do that. But the players who are on those teams never make any money because they're not the ones telling the story. So I've been thinking that we, if we turn into one of those teams that inspires the movie, I'm gonna be the one to cash in. So before I pack practice tonight, I put together a permission form and, and got my teammates to sign in. Sign it. I, what, 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 hereby authorize Greg Heffley to use my likeness and, and imagine in a film or television series or and any subs, subsequent sequels throughout the universe and, and in per Perpuity. Sign here. The only person who I gave gave me an issue about it was Yusuf, who said he'd have to ask his parents before he could sign the form. But after I, but after I promised to give my lunch snacks for the next three days, he was on board too. Scribble, scribble, scribble. Deal's a deal. A very good deal. All we need to do now is win this tournament and I, so I can sell the rights up to one of the studios and make that make feel good movies. And I can already see the poster in my head. The underdogs. Every dog has his day. Sunday. The second chance tournament was halfway halfway across the halfway across the street. It state. I guess my teammates' parents were burned out in, on basketball because none of them wanted to take to make the drive. So yesterday mom rented a big van to get to the team to the tournament. She said there was a chance we'd play for two days, so everyone had to pack an overnight bag. Some kids packed way too much for one night. Yusuf brought two loaves of bread and a bunch of supplies for his sandwiches, plus a backpack filled with chocolate-covered raisins. 
Jaybury bought its video game system and a computer monitor so we could all play games in the van. But I guess it was too much for the vehicle's electrical system to handle. Because we had to pull into a repair shop when the when the circuit board got overloaded. Repairs while you wait. Nope, not using that. We made another pit stop when Yusuf needed to use the bat rest restroom after eating half of the chocolate covered raisins all by himself. Since this was a big competition, I thought it would held would be held at call at a college campus or in or a convention center or something. So I was pretty disappointed when he pulled up at the old prison that's scheduled to be torn down next year. But I guess that's just the way it is when your team is one of the worst in the state. Second chance, second chance tournament. Welcome to welcome middle schoolers. When mom went to the desk at desk to register, she got some bad news. There was already a team called the Huskies in the tournament, so she had to come up with another name. And I guess mom was feeling stressed that we were, we were late, so she just wrote down the first name that popped into her head. Second chance tournament registration form. Team name. Wimpton Dogs, I think. But when I saw the na the names of the other teams we were competing against, I didn't feel so bad about ours. Yellow Bellies, Banana Slugs, Brawlers, Rubber Duckies, Winter Dogs. Oh wait, Winter Dog is it's Winter Dogs. Mathletes, All Stars, Banshees, Art. Artie chokers. The the most normal one is brawlers, I think. The games m were being held in a big open area that must have been as a cafeteria when the prison was open. There was a sign with a list of rules written on it, and I'm not sure if it was for us or the. Or for the prisoners, prisoners, miss all rules. One, no sharp ob objects. Two, no swearing. Three, no complaining. Four, no food fights. The courts were side by side, which meant there wasn't any room for the fans what to watch the games. But that's okay because it looked like nobody else's parents had come to this thing either. Our opponents were ready, or were already warming up on court three. And I have to admit, I was a little relieved that we were playing the Madleys All, All Stars in round one. Boom! But I shouldn't have underestimated them because these guys made up their. For their lack of basketball skins with their brains, y equals m x plus b. D equals gibberish, and I don't know what that means. Never underestimate your your enemies. Either they're weak or really old. Their team. Was lousy on defense, so he scored a bunch too, but we couldn't do anything to stop their offense. And at the final buzzer, the score was seventy, seventy, seven. All right, thirty-seven to thirty. Mathlete All Stars. Me and my teammates were pretty bummed out because we knew this was the our big chance to finally get a win, and we blew it. Plus, we felt kind of dumb for packing up, packing overnight bags. But then mom told us something that was pretty shocking. She said that in the second chance tournament, you played until you won. That meant the mathletes were going home, and we were staying. And that's the alarm clock. 
I checked the last video, and you can hear it because it's small. Anyways, uh, I keep forgetting to fix comments. Um, I'll do it. It's done. Okay. Anyways, bye.